Hey ladies, Merry Christmas. I didn't think I was gonna come on today, but I have a couple minutes here before I um, go make some breakfast for my family. So um, something just popped in my head, so I thought I would talk about it. I don't think I've mentioned this before. <clears throat> it's about getting a ring, okay? The way I got this second to last ring, the one I got in the Dominican Republic, okay? There's a technique I use. It wasn't really a technique I thought out. I just did it like on a whim because it just, maybe it was like a little bit desperate almost. Yeah, not desperate. I mean, it it felt weird when I was doing it, but I think it worked because I ended up getting a ring. So possibly that's what did it. And it's also possible that he was just going to give me a ring anyway. But maybe, I mean, I think he was going to, but it was, he was planning on doing it like later on down the road, you know, he would always say stuff like, oh yeah, I would get you a ring, but you know, after we're living together and we're together for a long time and, you know, I've been learning that, um, from, you know, the different hypergamous coaches I've been working with and things like that and the classes I've done and all the YouTube videos I watched that that is not always a wise idea. Sometimes that can work. Sometimes you can go and live with a man and cohabitate with him and, you know, act like a wife or, you know, like do those kind of things. And then he still wants to, you know, be a husband to you. He still wants to like, you know, do it the proper way and get you a ring. And he still wants to marry you. He wants to do all that. But I think the fear is that a lot of these uh, coaches are talking about is that in many, many, many more cases, the guy gets too relaxed and comfortable because he's already getting everything from you. And then, you know, he may have gone into their relationship with the intention of becoming engaged to you and marrying you. But then once he realizes that he doesn't have to do all that, he just kind of puts it on the back burner. And he's like, oh, maybe I'll propose next year. And eh, now's not the right time. I got to save a little more money or I want to do this first. I want to do that first. And they keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then eventually you're together for like nine years and you never got a ring. And you're starting to feel very neglected and really disappointed that you didn't get like a ring in a marriage, you know, like you had wanted to. And he doesn't think it's that big of a deal because, you know, you guys are, you know, relatively happy and everything is fine. Okay. So anyway. I think I expedited the process and I avoided that from happening to me by, I played a couple of sick games. Okay. I played two sick games and now three, I played three sick games <laughs> that may or may not have been necessary, but I know I got the end result I was looking for. So it must've worked or it's just, you know, a coincidence that I played those games and it still worked out. So anyway, let me get into it. Let me tell you the things I did. One, when I was wanting a ring from this guy and like it wasn't happening, I um, didn't talk to him for like, you know, long periods of time, you know, days, sometimes a couple of weeks, you know, and I kept telling him, look, we're not really together because I don't have a ring from you. You know, we're not really together. In his mind, he was saying that we were together. And I said, well, I can't believe you when you say we're together because I don't have a ring to prove it. And then I went on my merry way and I started dating other people, okay? And I lied to him. Um, I actually told him at one point that I couldn't see him, okay? He reached out to me one night. And, you know, like he always does, he's like always trying to see me, always trying to see me. Even if I haven't talked to him for a couple weeks, like this man is very persistent. He won't leave it alone. He'll keep trying to go after me. So um, this one night after not talking to him for like a couple of weeks, probably, I said, look, I really can't see you. And he's like, why, 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 what's going on? And I'm like, because I have somebody else in my life right now and he's really crazy he's like what do you mean i'm like look there's this other man in our town that um he gave me a ring and i accepted it okay he really wanted me to be in a relationship with him and no i barely knew him i only you know met him once 
you know, like once or twice or something like that. Okay. And I specifically made the story like this saying like, I just met him one because I didn't want him to think I was talking to another man while I was talking to him. Okay. Two, because I wanted to show him that other men commit really, really fast. <laughs> so he better hurry up because there's other men out there that want to buy me rings. Like, you know, the first time they meet me. So I told him, look, I met this other man and he was really, really good to me. He loved me so much. He fell in love with me the first time he saw me and he wanted to be with me. And I told him that the only way I could take a man seriously and believe we're really together and believe he really loves me is if he proves it by putting a ring on my finger. And that's basically what I told this guy, but he wasn't following my rules. So I basically told him that another man thought that was a great idea. Okay. He didn't think it was a great idea at first, at least not right now. So I would just started telling him about this other man that I think it's really going to work out because he agrees with me. He said, I think that's a wonderful idea. And then I told him that this guy went and he got me a ring immediately because he wanted to make sure that no other men could have me. So I told him this story, right? And then I told him, but the problem is, is that after he gave me the ring, you know, I was very happy and very excited to start a relationship. Okay. I didn't tell him like the relationship happened because I didn't want him to think, you know, like I slept with him or something like that. So, you know, I made it seem like this relationship was very intense and very fast. And I got this ring just like so quickly. And then, um, but then something bad happened. I told him, I said, oh my God, but after I accepted the ring, I found out he was only 26 years old. I thought he was so much older. He looked so much older. And part of this is true because I did have some type of relationship like that. And the guy was only 26. No, he did not get me a ring, but you know, I could tell this story and it seems very truthful because half of the story was true, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I said, yeah. And he was only 26 years old and he was so in love with me. And, um, but I, you know, I really wanted to be with him and he was such a gentleman and he didn't try to sleep with me. He didn't try to do anything. He just went and he got me a ring because he really wanted me to be his woman. And, um, but then I had to break up with him because he was only 26 and I knew it would never work. And then I told him, said, look, you cannot come and pick me up tonight because I cannot be seen in public with you right now because he's really upset. Okay. And it's a small town. Like I always tell you guys. So I told him, so this 26 year old is really, really, really upset right now. He's really broken hearted that I can't be with him right now. So I really don't want to upset him by being seen with you in public. Like, you know, like a couple of days later after the awful breakup happened. So I'm like, look, I cannot see you in public around here. And he's like, did you sleep with him? Did you give yourself to him? Please tell me you didn't do that. Please tell me you didn't do that. And I'm like, look, there wasn't enough time for all that. As soon as he gave me the ring, you know, shortly after I found out his age and he looks really old. Like I thought he was like 36 because he's in the sun all the time. So he's, you know, he's like 26, but his skin is kind of like wrinkly and he doesn't use sunblock. So I really thought he was older. That's the only reason I accepted the ring. Okay. Because I really wanted a man that was going to give me a ring and you wouldn't give me one. And then God, I always throw God in there because, you know, he's kind of like a little bit religious. So I always throw God in there so he can't argue with me. So I'm like, and then when you didn't feel ready to give me a ring, God sent me a man with a ring because God wanted to heal my broken heart and give me a man with a ring. So God sent him. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. God sent him to me with a ring. So that's what I told him. And then I said, now this guy with the ring, you know, the, uh, the kid, the 26 year old that gave me the ring is really upset. He's like, you know, he's really mad. 
He's really sad. And for some reason, I had like a picture from another friend who had sent me a picture who happens to have a gun permit in the Dominican Republic. He was sending me pictures of a new apartment he bought and just furnished. And in like the corner of the picture, you could see his gun. Okay. It was like on the table. So I had that picture and like I zoomed in on the gun and I screenshotted it <laughs> and then I lied. Okay. I told my ring guy that, um, I said, look, and the 26 year old is really upset. He just sent me this picture <laughs> and I sent him the picture of the gun on the table in an apartment that you could tell was in the Dominican Republic, you know, just by, you know, like the furniture and the flooring and, you know, anybody who's from there knows what a Dominican apartment looks like. So it was very believable. This was not just, you know, a picture I took in the U.S. or, you know, something I stole off the internet. It was a real picture of a real gun in a real apartment in the DR. And so I sent him the picture and I'm like, look, the 26 year old is really upset right now. I don't know if maybe he's going to like uh, do something to himself or to somebody else. I don't want it to hurt you. So I cannot go out with you right now. I cannot go on dates with you right now. I just want to wait until he calms down. <laughs> so I, you know, that was the first thing I did. And this was basically to show him Okay, and girls, I'm not encouraging you to play immature games, okay? I didn't even really set out to do this. It just came out of my mouth one day. Like, I, you know, I was not planning on doing this, but it just came up for me, and I just went with it, and I did it, okay? <laughs> it is pretty immature, but I think it may have been needed in our situation because this man was, like, messing with me for months, and I could just see the relationship was going, you know, the... It was just going to go to a place that we would eventually end up not very happy. So I, it was just an attempt to try to fix the relationship and bring it back into his awareness. Because I think he was getting a little bit ungrateful and thought he could just have me however he wants for as long as he wants without doing his part. Okay. So that's what I was getting scared of. So I used this trick, this tool to show him. And, you know, like to basically remind him that there are other men out there who would love to put a ring on my finger. So maybe if he loves me as much as he says he does, maybe he should hurry the hell up and make that happen now. You know? Um, so anyway, I used that little tool. I pretended there was another guy who gave me a ring and he was very upset and very distraught. And I also threw in the part that nothing ever really happened between us because I found out he was only 26 and I couldn't possibly be with a 26 year old. So I had to break up with him and break his heart. And I'm so sad for him because he was such a wonderful man. And it was so sweet that he gave me a ring and all that. So I made up this story and I said that I gave him his ring back and then, you know, we talked about it and he wasn't upset anymore. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, you know, you know, like we made a truce and everything was fine. And, you know, he wasn't going to do anything with that gun and that whole thing. <laughs> so one, I put that fear, that awareness into my ring guy's mind that, hey, there are other men that want to put a ring on your woman's finger. Maybe it's time you consider moving this along a little bit faster. So anyway, um, I told him that, and then that still didn't completely work. I mean, I think it got him like thinking about it more and, you know, like gearing up for it. And then maybe it was me just going too fast. But so anyway, like a couple weeks later, I was like, shit, it worked the first time. Let me scare him a little bit more. So, um, I actually... I still have to post the videos of this SD guy. He was like a scammer SD, I think. I still have to upload the videos. It was from like two months ago. I have a video footage of me like fighting this guy in the street. I literally, girls, you're going to love this video. I paid this dude. It was a guy I met at a resort. 
he was like um, from Santiago, but he was up at a resort on the North Coast and I met him there and he like chased me for days. It was so fun and he spent all kinds of money on me and I ended up extending my trip to spend more time with him and um, we ended up getting into like a fight in the middle of the night in the street and girls, you're going to love this. It goes so against everything we believe in. I paid this man. I gave him $100 to get the F out of my face and leave me alone. Okay. But that's going to be another. Um, okay. And I was recording it. I was recording it. So I captured some of our fight on camera. His clothes were in the street in a puddle. It was great. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to post those videos one day. They're going to be so good. Oh, they're so funny. I wanted to show you guys these videos like weeks ago and they're like buried in my phone now and I keep getting busy and I have to edit them a little bit. But so anyway, um, anyway, I played the game again with my ring guy. I ended up meeting this guy at the resort. I spent a couple days with him. Like a lot of my dates are, they end up being like two day long dates. It's really weird. So anyway, I spent like a couple days with this guy. Girls, I smacked this guy in the face and everything. And he wanted to marry me after I did it. I got to make a video on that too. Oh my God, it's going to be so good. I can't wait. And I, uh, I made a video like right after I smacked him in his face. He was trying to get fresh. <laughs> I'll make a video on the smacking a guy in the face. Um, smacking a guy in the face tool. It's a tool you can use like to gain respect and make them love you even more. It works on like a lot of men, but we'll talk about that in another video. Okay. This is a classic move. Like if you look in any black and white movie from a long time ago, what would the woman always do? She'd be a high value woman. A guy would kiss her and then she would smack him in the face after. I'm telling you it works. Anyway, I smacked this guy I met in the resort. I smacked him in the face. And then the next day, he said he wanted to marry me. And we started ring shopping on his phone. <laughs> and, we, and then we were going to go to Santiago the next day and go buy my ring. And he wanted me to, like, go and live with him at his house in Santiago. But so anyway, um, I went on, like, a two-day-long date with this guy. And when we were ring shopping on his phone... Okay, um, I pulled out my phone and I recorded us ring shopping on his phone, sitting at a table at a restaurant on the beach. And it was like evening time. There's like all these like white lights. It looks so romantic. And then um, I took that little video clip, okay? And I posted it on my WhatsApp status, okay? In the DR, that's what everybody uses is WhatsApp and they post stuff on their WhatsApp status. So I posted it on my WhatsApp status, just like this little video clip of me with some man that nobody knows ring shopping on his phone at a romantic restaurant on the beach with like a bottle of wine on the table. <laughs> so I posted that. So my ring guy, okay, this is before he got me the ring. I posted that video so that he would see it. And he would be like, oh, another man, An a second one is trying to steal my woman. <laughs> so I did that. Girls, I know this is immature. I know. But I think it worked. Okay, so I did that. And um, <laughs> shortly after, oh, ah. What did I do? Then, you know, like he knew about that. And I said, look, God sent me another man with a ring to make up for you not wanting to, you know, be ready to give me a ring and to make up for my broken heart about the, you know, the other man who I thought I could love that I found out was only 26. So, you know, God is always on my side. You know how God and I are, we're very tight. It's not my fault that you picked a woman that has this type of a re relationship with God. You have to understand this is going to keep happening because God loves me the most. Like God is just, I'm tight. I'm like this with God. And anytime I want something, you know, he just sends it to me. I'm a manifesting, powerful woman miracle 
like, you know, I always tell him this about me so that he's like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? This woman is magical and whatever she wants, she's going to get. So I better hurry up and be the one to give it to her because if I don't, she's going to get it within like 24 hours or less. She's going to have it sent to her and it's not her fault because God's making it happen. So, you know, I like always remind him of this and, you know, like I make it so like it's not my fault. I'm like, look, if I just want something a little bit, God will send it to me because God knows what I deserve. God knows I deserve a loving man with a ring who's going to put a ring on my finger and give me the life I deserve because I'm God's daughter. And what does a father want for his daughter? You know, I say that because he has two daughters. And I'm like, and of course you understand. What does a father want for his daughter? He wants his daughter to be loved and worshipped and respected. And he wants his daughter to have a real man that puts a ring on her finger and proves his love. Because look, women get approached every day by men who say that they love us and they want to be with us and they want to date us. But how many of those men are really going out and buying a ring and putting it on her finger? Not that many because only a rare, special, true man goes and does all that. All the other ones are just pretending. And babe, I know you're not pretending. You just want to wait longer, but you have to understand that it looks like you might be pretending. And God doesn't want that for me. God does not want me living in that state of worry. He really doesn't. God loves me so much that whenever I want something or whenever, you know, I need something, he's going to give it to me right away, right away, right away. I'm so sorry, babe. Like, I wish it was you. I wish it was you. But if you're not, if you're not ready right now, I can't make you ready, okay? But I, but I have to do what God tells me to do. And God wants me to be in a wholesome relationship with a lot of respect. God doesn't want me treated like I'm just some regular hoe on the street, okay? God wants me to be treated like amazingly well. So he's going to take one of his sons and send one of his sons to me, okay? Whether it's you, whether it's a 26-year-old, whether it's this new guy, okay? Babe, Listen, none of this is within my control. These are not my choices. This is all God. This is all God. I'm just following what God wants for me. And I know he wants the best for me. So he's going to keep offering me the best through many people. He's going to send me his amazing sons to bring me rings. Okay. <clears throat> so then that happens. And then I did end up having the fight with this guy that I was ring shopping with and I had the video footage. So what did I do? After a couple days, I sent the video footage to, you know, my ring guy um, saying, oh my God, that man who was trying to marry me so quickly and take me to Santiago to live with him and all that. He went crazy. I think he has mental problems. And I sent him the video of like his clothes in the street. And I told him, I was like, <gasps> he said he was so in love with me that he wanted to sleep in the hotel with me that night. And we had a big fight in the street. And I took his clothes and I threw them in the street in the puddle because I was like, I'm not sleeping with you yet without a ring. Ugh. You know, I made it seem all like that. So yes, he was afraid somebody was about to steal me, but then he also was reminded of what kind of woman I am. Like, no, I'm never going to sleep with anybody without a ring. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not true. I mean, I would like that to be true, but you know, I can't say I've never made mistakes in my life, of course. But you know, he needs to think of me like that. He needs to think of me like that. So he doesn't try to get one over on me. Okay, so he doesn't try to like abuse me in that way. Oh, I just said the A word. Now I can't monetize this video. Shoot, that's all right. That's fine. I don't need to monetize all of them. So, um, so that was the story. I told him that um, I broke up with the guy and threw his clothes in the street. And I decided I didn't want to marry him. I didn't want to ring from him because he disrespected me. Trying to go to a hotel with me. Ugh, ugh. So that's what I told him. 
And that was, you know, halfway true. That was, you know, like half the story. So, um, I mean, I really didn't like that guy anyway for other reasons, but, you know, that doesn't matter. The story made sense and it made me look good and it made me look very sought after. And it made him scared that, oh my God, like two guys in two weeks are trying to marry the woman I love. Are trying to put a ring on her, trying to steal her from me. That's how I wanted him to feel. But I also wanted him to feel like I didn't sleep with either one of these guys, you know, and I wouldn't. <clears throat> and um, so then I tell him, well, you know how God is, right? Like God's always working on my side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to Santiago for a while. And then this one night, I basically scripted, but not in my journal, okay? I didn't script in my journal. I scripted by texting, and I sent him the script, okay? It was a script about how I'm going to go to Santiago, and I'm going to wear a beautiful red dress. So he loves when I wear red dresses. Like, he goes crazy. He loves it, okay? The day he met me, I was wearing a red dress, Okay, so I basically scripted to him about what's going to happen to me. Like, what is going to happen to me? And I know it's going to happen because of the way God and I are. We are tight and everything I script and think about happens for me. So I'm like, look, I've decided I'm going to move to Santiago. You now it's like two hours away. It's a big city and everybody knows it's like where all the wealthy Dominicans are. You know, they're all in Santiago. So I'm like, look, I'm going to move to Santiago because I just have to get out of here. There's been too much heartache for me up here in our little beach town with you not loving me enough to give me a ring. You know, I loved the other guy or I was going to love him. Then I found out he was only 26. So that really hurt my heart. And then this other man that I was about to accept a ring from and we were ring shopping. And then we had the fight in the street because he was trying to sleep with me. I was so appalled by that. Like, I'm just... God, God told me it's time to move to Santiago, okay? Santiago de los Caballeros, okay? Caballeros are gentlemen. <laughs> so I told him, I'm going to move to the city of gentlemen because that's where I'm going to find the guy God is sending for me. <laughs> So I faked like I was moving to Santiago. I literally went there for a little while. Okay. This is when I was doing the manifesting with God course with Mina Irfan. I know some of uh, my universe sister guru girls are listening here. My universe guru sisters are listening here. So they'll know what I'm talking about. There was part of the class where we talked about creating wormholes, right? talked about creating wormholes by going places you don't normally go by taking routes you don't normally take you know by putting yourself in like non-typical situations to create a wormhole so when they told me to do that in class when Mina said I should do that I said okay well I'm gonna move to Santiago I'm just gonna go to Santiago so I went to Santiago and this was all like you know it all worked out because so I went there and okay, so I scripted to this man that I was going to move to Santiago because that's where all the gentlemen are. Santiago de los Caballeros. Okay. I'm like, that's where the gentlemen are. That's where I'm going to heal my broken heart and receive the man and the ring that God has for me. And um, so I went out there, you know, I spent like several days there and, you know, I dated around. And I had like so much fun. It was, it was really nice. I drank way too much wine though, but I had like such good food and I met so many men. Like I went on like three dates a day out there just walking down the street. Like men were just like pulling over and like nice cars and just be like, hey, I want to take you out. Or I'd just be like walking down the street and they'd be like, hey, let's go have lunch. Let's go have, oh, my stutter on dinner. Let's go have dinner. And it's like my dates were just like rolling one into the next. Like I was actually becoming sick out there because I was just like eating and drinking so much and staying up to like four in the morning and just all these men were like calling me and texting me and chasing me and I couldn't like keep them straight in my mind. It was, oh my God, it was so awful. I gained like 10 pounds of water weight out there. So anyway, I went out there and, um, 
you know, the whole time I'm like posting videos and pictures on my WhatsApp status, like showing all the nice places I was at and all the pretty dresses I was wearing. And, you know, I'm just like out there and I'm like free. And oh, so let me tell you what I scripted to him. I sent him this like long script text about, you know, what's going to happen to me. I'm like, look, God loves me so much. This is exactly how it's going to play out. And I threw in things there that I knew would trigger him. Like, I'm going to be wearing a red dress. He likes when I wear a red dress a lot, a lot, a lot. So in his mind, he knows that other men like when I wear a red dress. That other men will see me from across the room or across the street if I'm wearing a red dress. So I'm like, I'm going to be wearing a red dress. And I'm going, okay, I made it like really dramatic because he's really dramatic, okay? I literally went online and I looked up the lyrics of rake songs and bachata songs and I just like I just you know like I translated all the words from Spanish to English so I could fully comprehend it I'm like Pff. I just took all those lyrics and I put them into a script because that's how his mind thinks his mind thinks in romantic Spanish songs because that's what he's exposed to all the time and that's what that's what his inner dialogue is okay so I took a bunch of lyrics and words and themes from these songs and I put it into my script and it was so dramatic girls you can only do the overly overly romantic dramatic stuff with like latin men or men from other parts of the world don't try it so much with regular born and raised american men because you will sound like really weird and unstable okay but you can use this with men of men from other cultures very romantic cultures like if you live in Italy or something like that, you can use it on those men, okay? Latin culture kind of people, you can totally exaggerate all this stuff and you won't sound crazy. They, they, they will take it even more seriously, okay? But so in this situation, it works because he's a Dominican man. So his brain is already really exaggeratory when it comes to love and romance. So he actually understands me better when I exaggerate a lot when I don't exaggerate because I'm American yes I'm Puerto Rican but I was born in the United States and you know I have a lot of cultural influence from here to where I'm not that romantic with words I'm you know I'm more melancholy more low-key like <laughs> I don't express that much I express my anger but I don't express a lot of love and romance verbally, okay? So when I'm not doing that, it's almost like he can't hear me. Like he has no interest in listening to me. When when I amp it up and make it super dramatic, then all of a sudden he can hear me. It's just, you know, it's weird. But so anyway, so I wrote this whole script and I used all these words and themes from all these romantic songs that I found online. And it was all like, I'm going to be walking down the street and the love of my life is going to see me from across the road. And he's going to come to me and he's going to get down on one knee. And like, <laughs> like I made it really dramatic. And then I went into talking about like, as soon as our eyes meet, like as soon as he sees me and I see him, we will both know that we are each other's love for the rest of our lives. And he will know it so deeply in his heart that he will want to immediately, immediately put a ring on my finger as fast as possible because he knows that God sent him his queen, his princess, the woman of his life. And he will not take any risk. This is a man that knows what he wants and he goes out and gets it this is a man with courage who's not afraid like I said all this like crazy stuff and then I went on and on talking about how what our life is going to be like together and we're going to make love like three times a day because we're just gonna be so in love and we're gonna have eyes for no one else and we're gonna be so happy like we're not, you know, we'll never be able to keep our hands off each other. And we're going to do everything together every day. And we're going to pray together. We're going to go to church together. And, you know, we're going to love 
God together and we're going to do nice things. And all the nice things I talked about are things that I know he likes doing. Okay. He likes spending time with his grandmother, with his family. That's like a big thing for him. He, you know, you guys saw the recent video where his grandmother just died. Uh, like this is like, you know, he's one of those kind of guys. He will literally go on a Friday night and just sit with his grandmother in her living room because this is the stuff he enjoys, you know? But, um, so all the things I talked about in this script with this other man I'm going to meet in Santiago, I, all the things I said we were going to do together as a couple were all the things I know that he likes doing, that he wants to do as a couple. So I'm like, we're going to spend all this time with our families and we're going to be so happy and we're going to eat. And I started like listing all the foods that we're going to eat because it's, you know, stuff that like he likes to eat with me. <laughs> so, you know, I tried to put all the five senses into the script as well. Okay, like the things we're going to see, you know, like the red color and I talked about we're going to go to the ocean and we're going to watch the waves and we're going to see this and we're going to see that. And then I talked about like, you know, smells. Oh, and I'm, and I, and I'm going to hug him every night and I'm going to like bury my nose in his chest and just breathe him in and smell him. And, you know, and, you know like, so I talked about smell, sight, you know, I talked about touch and, you know, I tried to bring all the senses into the script and taste, you know, because I mentioned the foods that we're going to eat together. And okay, this is activating all five of his senses, reading my scripts. And it's all stuff he wants to do with me. You know, he's picturing some other man is doing all these things with me, but he can't be mad at me yet because I haven't met this man yet. I'm just talking about how I'm about to meet him when I go to Santiago. Okay. So, um, Yeah. And then I end up actually going to Santiago and he's seeing all these photos of me walking around Santiago and in the restaurants. And he's thinking of the script I sent him of this amazing man I'm going to meet and he's going to put a ring on my finger and he's going to whisk me away and it's going to be magical. So I built this whole story into his mind. And remember, this is after his two weeks of trauma when two other men tried to marry me. Okay. <laughs> So that's part of what I did, girls. <clears throat> All right. And he did end up showing up in Santiago. Okay. Which um, it was probably like kind of planned. <laughs> he said he needed to go to Santiago to um, fix his car. There's plenty of places on the North Coast where he could fix his car. But he said he had to bring it to Santiago. Even though, you know, I just happened to be there. And then he wanted to see me. And he was, you know trying to see me while I was there, he said he wanted to spend two whole days with me there. And I'm like, but bro, I thought you were mad that like two other guys tried to marry me and then I moved to Santiago to be far away from you and find my prince that God was sending to me. But now you're in Santiago and you're trying to spend two days with me? Like what is going on? So when he did that, I actually um did not see him. I didn't see him because at that point, like I had a quantum leap, like the night before, like a crazy mental quantum leap where all my feelings for him just like went away. And I didn't care if he came for me or not. And then all of a sudden, okay, I hadn't spoken to him in like a whole week. I think he had blocked me or I blocked, no, I was still posting stuff and he was seeing it. So I couldn't have been blocked. I don't know. Maybe it was one of the times we just weren't talking. Yeah, we probably weren't talking because he was upset because two other men, well, one gave me a ring and one was about to give me a ring. And, you know, I think he was busy pouting over that. So finally, I think, you know, he got over his pouting and then decided he was going to come to Santiago and try to get me, you know, to get me back in his life. So, um, he came to Santiago and then I refused to see him and I didn't talk to him. You know, that created some distance and some suffering. And this whole time he's probably really worried. Like she's going to meet that magical man in Santiago. Right. 
So anyway, that's what I kind of did, okay? And um, then I ended up getting a ring from him not too long after. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't really want to play games like that. It's just I didn't expect it to be that long and drawn out. I didn't think it would happen like that. And it just kept going and going, going. The story just kept going and going, going. And I just went with it. I didn't do a whole lot of thinking about it or a whole lot of planning. But as it was unfolding, I started to think, oh, maybe this is something. Maybe this is going to work. Then he ends it up getting me a ring. I think it may have something to do with that. Of course, his version of the story is... I would have gotten you a ring anyway. It probably would have happened months ago if we didn't have so many problems in our relationship. I don't know if that's true or not. Because we were like dating and talking for about eight months. But we were like dating and talking and fighting like the whole freaking time. It was awful. We were just constantly fighting because he was constantly trying to like make me go to bed with him and constantly trying to make me sleep at his house and constantly trying to have me move in with him. Yes, like I appreciate that he wanted, you know, to be a provider. I mean, obviously if he wants me to go and, you know, move out of my place and just go and live with him completely, to me that means he's trying to find a way to provide for me. You know, he wants to provide housing for me and transportation and food and all the basic necessities of life. Like, I totally love that and appreciate that. But that could also, in some situations, that could also be like a trap to get all the wife stuff from a woman without completely earning it, you know? And that's what I was thinking. That's what I was scared of. Like, I didn't want to be, like, taken advantage of. So, I mean... Yeah, I guess you could look at it both ways. I mean, it is a way for a man to provide for you if he puts you under his roof, right? I mean, as long as he's not saying, yeah, come and move in my place and start paying my rent for me. I mean, then clearly that is wrong. But I didn't get that feeling from him at all that he wanted me to like move in and pay bills. I think what he was trying to do was have me move in with him and just rent out my place full time. So then in a way... You know, I would be paying less bills and I would be making more money because I could rent my place out more often because as of right now, I rent out my place half of the month and then I live in it half of the month, okay? Because I'm in the U.S. for half of the month. So what he wanted me to do was to stop going to my place when I got to the DR, just go and live with him for those two weeks every month. But so anyway, I just... That kind of bothered me in a way. Because I know what it means when you go and live with a man, you sleep in his bed every night, you know? That's basically what that means, right? I mean, I highly doubt he thought we were going to be living together and he wasn't going to be touching me. So, I don't know. Not that I didn't want him to touch me because I do. Like, I do and I did. I just didn't want to repeat an old pattern in my life where I let people do that kind of stuff with me before they've given me what I wanted you know so I had to like you know not that like I really even like want to be engaged to anybody it's not really what I want I just want to only be intimate with a person that wants to really be with me and is willing to prove it okay that's what i was desiring and so far so good i mean girls it's i went through like a lot of pain <sighs> getting to where i needed to be in this relationship to actually be able to manifest what i've manifested no it's not perfect it's definitely not perfect but it's been like a great learning experience and you know, I'm grateful for what I have manifested. And I look back now, I probably didn't need to make it nearly as difficult as I made it, but I did. But I think while I was making it difficult, while I was playing games, while I, you know, 
games. I don't know if they're really games, but while I was going through all of this, I was also growing. I was growing as a woman. I was learning new things about myself and um, I was learning my value and I was also exercising and practicing like valuing myself by saying no, by staying away, by forcing myself to rotationally date, even though my heart just wanted to go and be with this man and give him everything. But I didn't let myself do that. And it was very traumatic for me too, like, because I didn't want to go and rotationally date. Like part of me really just wanted to go stay with him and go live in his house and just do my old pattern where I just give too much and then I end up getting too little and then I'm very resentful and I turn into the masculine and he turns into the feminine and it's a whole shit show. But I was able to not do that this time, but still I need to be careful because I still have those old neural pathways of being that type of woman. So I need to be careful not to fall into that, you know, not to fall back into those kind of behaviors okay I'm not really that person anymore but I still have the neural pathways and they could be easily activated and I could start doing that stuff again without even completely realizing it so I have to stay very aware okay very very aware okay girls I have to go make chocolate chip pancakes for my family and then we're gonna go to the movies because it's Christmas we love Christmas because I love Jesus and I love Muhammad and Allah and Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I love all of them. So I love celebrating all the holidays. Okay. I love all of them. And everybody in my family is a Christian. So I love celebrating with them. We even have a birthday cake for Jesus. And you know what I heard? I heard that Jesus and Muhammad were best friends and they're buried next to each other in the cemetery. Have you guys ever heard of that? I heard that. I read it somewhere. It might be made up, but I think that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful story. You know, if it is a real place, I would like to go there and visit that cemetery. You know, I want to Google it and I'll put it on my bucket list. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye for now.